All right. Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? Did get some rest last night, everyone? Yes? Yes? I hope. Good, good, good. Well, hey, um, if you're new, I'm Pastor Brandon, the family pastor here at Living Word. So glad that you're here this morning. Those of you watching online, thank you. Thank you for being with us. So good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? Amen? Amen. Um, listen, a couple things. Again, if you're new, we want to get to know you. We want to um, see how we can help um, get you connected as a family. Um, best place to do that, go to our website, livingwordag.com. Fill out the Connect card there, the Connect tab there online. Um, there's also Connect cards and prayer cards in the seats in front of you. Um, anything also that we can be praying for you or your family about, please let us know. We spend time every week as a staff and as a prayer team praying over those, so we want to be um, joining with you in prayer, whatever's going on in your life that we can be praying for. Um, also, if you'd like to give, there's a give tab there online. You can give those of you here in the box on the way out if you prefer. Um, just thank you in advance for, for doing that, for being engaged here at Living Word. Amen. Amen. Let's continue in worship this morning. Let's pray together as we worship. Lord, thank you for your presence um, with us. Um, we pray this morning that you just continue to be with us in everything that we do through our worship time, through our giving. Um, Lord, take those offerings and gifts given and, and use them to further your kingdom right here in Wayne County and the surrounding area. Lord, we need your presence here this morning, and we need your presence in our world today. So we just pray um, a, a blessing over everything we do this morning, maybe to um, glorify and honor your name. In your name we pray, everyone said, amen, amen. Let's worship. Thank 
where you're at, Lord, you're there, right in the middle of it with us. And I pray that we would just continue to dwell with you this morning, to dwell in your love and your grace and your truth this morning. And we're so grateful for you. Amen. You can be seated. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hey, for all of you that uh, went to the church pic picnic on Wednesday, we had such a great time. I just want to give a personal thank you to all of you who brought chocolate chip cookies. Thank you. I appreciate you. I love you. I had about 25 of them. The side dishes were great. We had a really, really good time, so thank you for that. We're um, continuing our series in What Did Jesus Have to Say? And we're looking at just the hard sayings of Jesus, and we're dissecting them. We're diving into them to see what Jesus had to say, and today's um, passage that we're going to be looking into is a really difficult passage that many times we misunderstand or misinterpret, and we're going to dive into that today. I want you to think for a moment, if you played sports, and think back if you had a really good coach. What was the, what was the qualifications or what were the characteristics that made it make them a very, very good, good coach? If they were good, um, they probably pushed you beyond what you thought you could do, and they set a good example for you. And I, I personally love to study coaches and how they motivate their players. Um, I like to read stories about great coaches. And uh, what I've seen about great coaches, there's one theme that I see, one characteristic that I really see in great coaches, and it's humility. I remember my son played a baseball in high school, and we were playing a city school. And for some reason, the boys on this team, they were just different. They, the sportsmanship, I've never seen anything like it. I was watching the coach and the way he motivated his players. I remember Wesley got a double, and he was on second base. And I noticed our second baseman um, hit Wesley on his rump with his, with his glove, and they were laughing. And so after the game, I said to Wesley, I said, you didn't, did you know that second baseman? He goes, no. I go, what were you guys talking about? He goes, he just told me I had a good hit. I'm like, really? It was just – and watching the coach – motivate his players. So after the game, I went up to the coach and I said, hey, coach, can I just uh, tell you something? I'm My son plays for the other team. I just want to let you know, I've never seen a greater display of sportsmanship than I did today. And I want to tell you, you are must be doing a wonderful job with your, uh, with your boys. And he said to me this, he said, you know what? He goes, a lot of these uh, young men come from very, very difficult circumstances. And he goes, the one thing that I want to teach them more than anything else is that your character is much more important than your baseball skills. That your character is much more important than your baseball skills. And he goes, I tried to teach them humility. And the, and the coach exemplified that in the way he coached these young men. Um, one of my favorite basketball coach, college basketball coach coaches is the coach for the Virginia Cavaliers men's college team. His name is Tony Bennett, and uh, he's known for being a very generous person. I read an article about him and his coaching style, and this is what was said about him. They said his coaching paradigm is really built on biblical values. He's a strong uh, follower of Jesus, and he said, in this article that I read, he said, Coach Bennett built his program on the biblical pillars of humility, passion, unity, servanthood, and thankfulness. And it's interesting that when Jesus tells us to come and follow him, 
he tells us that there has to be a characteristic in those that follow Jesus. And what we're going to look at today is what does Jesus require of those who are going to chase after him? It's so much more than just calling ourselves Christians or we come to church or we may read our Bible. Those things are important. But there's a characteristic that Jesus sees in every follower of him, and it's humility. And those that were listening to him one day, Jesus says, if you're going to follow me, this has to be the main characteristic of those who chase after me. And he, what he does is he tells those that are going to follow him that they must deny themselves. And it's interesting that if you're going to deny yourself, you have to be humble at the same time. Humility and denial go hand in hand. And there's something about when we follow Jesus that we have to relinquish our control and give that control to Jesus. And this is what Jesus is telling them. Unless I have every part of you, unless you're willing to deny yourself, then you truly can't be a follower of me. Jesus is requiring allegiance to his lordship. And what Jesus does for us, he just doesn't tell us, he shows us. Jesus was an example of humility in the way he lived his life. In fact, Jesus came into this world not to be served, but to serve us, to give his life as a ransom for you and I. Jesus showed us the way of denial and humility, and that is the way to the Father's heart. Came not to serve, but to he came to serve us, but not not be served. I want you to listen to how Jesus describes a follower of him. We're going to look at the Gospel of Luke, chapter nine. Listen to Jesus's words here. He says to all who are listening, he says, "If anyone would come after me, let him do what, deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me." Now, for those that may have been listening right away, they're like, "What is Jesus saying? Or take up your cross?" At this point, Jesus has not gone to the cross. So they're probably thinking, wait a minute, what, is, what does Jesus mean there? Because for us, looking back, we can discern maybe what Jesus meant by the cross. But for those listening at that time, they understood that a cross was an instrument of execution. So what does Jesus mean by denying yourself, taking up your cross? And he says to take it up daily, not just once, not just once in a while. But he tells those that are going to chase me, he says, you need to take up your cross and follow me, and you need to do that daily. He says, for whoever would save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the world and loses or forfeits himself? Amen to God's word. So let's, let's understand what Jesus means here. Let's understand what he means by the cross, or when we hear the words, carry my cross. Now, some mistakenly interpret their cross as some burden in their life. Now, that's a misunderstanding of what Jesus says. Or have you ever done that? Like, you know, you got a hangnail, and you're like, oh, it's just the cross I got to bear today, right? You got some problem, you know, that in your life, something, and we just say, oh, that's just the cross I have to bear. Can I just say this? That's wrong. So stop saying it. Okay? If you're somebody else saying it, say, hey, Pastor Barton told me that's wrong, so let me just have a conversation with you to straighten you out. You're not supposed to say that anymore. No, I'm just teasing. But let's see what Jesus really meant by that. So we mistakenly interpret that as some burden in our lives. When we look at the problems in our lives, we say it's just some cross that I'm bearing. We tend to see the cross we bear as the minor inconvenience in our lives. That's not what Jesus is talking about here. What is Jesus talking about? In order to understand what Jesus meant, we must take a closer look at this passage. So what does Jesus mean when he says that we must deny ourselves? Because that's the key to unlocking this pa passage. It's about denial. Denial and the cross go hand in hand. So what did Jesus mean by that? What did Jesus mean by that? It's more than just denying ourselves of certain things. It's more than just denying ourselves of certain things. The things I struggle with the most in my life, I'm just going to be open with you, I call them the dreaded three C's. The dreaded three C's in my life. And those are cookies, cheese, and chips. Anybody else with me there? Can I just get an amen? Oh, my goodness. And all of you sinned by allowing me to eat too many cookies on Wednesday, all of you that brought chocolate chip cookies. Um, yeah, those are the things. I need a little more willpower when it comes to those three dreaded seas. But is this, what, is this what Jesus means? What Jesus means is this. 
To deny ourselves means to disown or renounce. To deny here means to disown or renounce. It means I no longer associate with this thing or this type of thinking or the way I used to live. You see, self-denial, what Jesus is saying, self-denial is intentional. It's intentional. Jesus says, if you're going to follow me, you have to lay down your life in order to follow me. What I'm doing is I'm actually stepping away from myself. I'm losing control of my life and allowing Christ to take control of my life. What I'm doing is I'm intentionally denying control over my life and giving power to Christ. I believe that's the hardest step to take when we follow the Lord, is that control or that lordship issue. When we have to say, Jesus, I'm going to give you full control of my life. I'm going to lay down my life to allow your power to work in me. And every single one of us, we want to control our lives. And it's okay to plan your life and so on and so forth. But how many you know, if you have a five-year plan or a 10-year plan and you look back at all your plans over the last five or 10 years, how did it work out for you? Right? How many just know, it, life doesn't always work out the way we want it to. Amen? We might have our plans, but those plans change. And that's why we, when we relinquish control of the Lord, we're saying, God, my plans are now your plans. And I'm going to follow you. And there are going to be times that things aren't going to work out the way that I want. But I know that ultimately you are in control and I can trust you. That's why Jesus says there has to be a daily dying to ourselves. That's why Jesus attaches these two words, denial and the cross, together. That's what we must understand. When Jesus says to take up your cross, it would be understood with a different mindset that we might see today. You see, we can look back with some clarity of what the cross meant. But for someone living in the first century, really, the cross meant humiliation and death. So why would Jesus tell his followers to take up their cross and follow him? Because when you were hung on a cross, it was for all to see. And you actually carried your cross to your execution. And we see that in the life of Jesus until he was too weary to carry his own cross. So for this first century person, they would see the cross as execution. It was used for the worst of the worst. Criminals, it was only reserved for criminals. And they're like, so what did, what did Jesus mean by carry my cross? The convicted criminal would be forced to carry their cross. It would be laid upon their back to carry their cross to their execution. And I got the cross behind me here because I want us to remind ourselves how powerful this cross is. Because when Jesus went to his execution, he willingly laid his life down at the will of his Father to face that execution for you and I. Jesus did nothing wrong. He was innocent. But for the sake of you and I, he humbled himself and allowed himself to be used by God for you and I as our substitute upon that tree 2,000 years ago. And so when you look at the cross, it's an example of humiliation and suffering. To carry your cross was utter humiliation for this reason. It showed complete submission. It showed complete submission. I want you to think about it for a moment. Your last act before death involved carrying your own death instrument And it was a sign of complete dominance and submission. You see, here's the thing I want you to see. You can either humble yourself willingly before God, or it can be thrusted upon you. How many of you like when humility is thrust upon you because of your own pride? That's not fun. But here's what Jesus says. Jesus willingly humbles himself to face the cross for you and I to face that humiliation for you and I. The cross is all about denial. It's about submission. And that's what Jesus does for you and I. And so to bear our cross means to give complete authority to to Christ. To carry my cross and deny myself means my allegiance have changed. It's a death to myself. It's a daily dying to myself. Here's the thing that we can easily forget as followers of Jesus. If I'm not daily carrying my cross and I'm not daily dying to myself, because how many know 
our dominance and wanting to control our life can easily creep up in our lives. When things don't go our way, we're like, hey, God, I may, can I help you out a little bit here? Can you move this along a little faster? Right? We, we want to take control of those. And for you, people who like to really be in control, this is a hard thing, right? It's waiting. It's allowing God to be in this whole process saying, I can trust you. But there has to be this daily dying to my desires and my wants and saying, God, you're in control of this. And I can trust you because you're a trustworthy God. I may not understand it. I may not like it. It may not be quick enough for me. But I can trust you. And and please allow me to die to my desires and my wants because my selfishness wants to creep up. My heart wants to go back to my selfishness. And if we're not daily doing this, then it's easy for me to rely on myself and my understanding. And this is what brings so much, can we just be honest? What brings so much stress in our lives and worry into our lives? It's the unknown. I don't know how this is going to work out. How's this going to work out? I don't know. How do you think it's going to work out? I don't know. What do we need to do? Right? We get so anxious. And that doesn't mean we're not concerned. That doesn't mean we don't think about things. That doesn't mean we don't research things. But what we need to do is relinquish those things to the Lord. And say, God, ultimately, you're in control, and I can trust you. Please allow me to die to my desires and what I want, and allow me to live for you. And within that comes this peace and this joy, knowing that God is in control. The more we die to ourselves, the more we allow Christ to live in us. And the more Christ is living in us, the more joy and peace we have. Why don't I learn that? Is it, um, anybody else with me this morning? It's so hard for me to learn. I got such a knucklehead, such a hard head sometimes. God says, Barton, just die to this. C- continually die into yourself and allow me to live in you. It's this complete allegiance. My allegiance has changed. And so we will c- consistently wrestle with this lordship issue in our lives. It's a struggle between what I want and what Christ wants for me. And we all have strongholds in our lives, things that have happened to us in our past, wrong thinking that's been in our lives. And those things have to be dismantled when we come to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We have things in our lives that are are difficult to give up. And that's what it means to die to ourselves. See, when I'm under the authority of Christ, I now think of what pleases Him. And how many know there are times in our lives where we just want to tell people where it's at, right? We just want to speak our mind. Have you ever felt that we just want to tell somebody off, right? We, this, this desire to want to be right and to be in control, and sometimes we lose control. We don't submit our lives to Christ. I don't know about you, but, but at times people just irritate me. Anybody else out there? Do people just irritate you at times? And we have to remember how many can just admit that sometimes we're irritating to other people. Amen? Be married for five minutes and you'll figure that out real quick, right? We, we all know that. But see, when I'm under the lordship of Christ, I must think differently. I must use self-control and think about how this will make my Savior look. See, it's, listen, we can be offended about everything, and it's easy to get offended, right? And I have to remind myself, someone always said this, and it just helps me so much, that whenever you're offended, most likely there's something in you that needs to die. When you're offended, when you get offended easily, we always want to blame it on everybody else and they need to change. They do, that might be true. But think about your own heart for just a minute. If there's something in you that's easily offended, if you're always up in arms about things, things there's something in you that must die. This is why Jesus says, a follower of me takes up their cross, denies themselves daily, meaning they die to themselves daily. Jesus died on that cross for you and I, for our sins, so that we would not have that hanging over our heads any longer. There's a denial there. And so Jesus says, give this control to me. I remember um, when I was playing soccer, when I was, I don't know, I was 10 or 11, 12 years old. And I remember my dad was, (laughs) I'll never forget, it was like it was yesterday, but I always remember this. It's pretty, looking back now, it's pretty funny. I'm glad my dad intervened. But I was at a soccer game, and I was playing this game, and this kid had this really cheap shot at me. He pushed me in the back, pushed me down. And um, I got up, and I wanted to just, 
go after this jerk. I mean, this this kid. I want to go after this guy. And so my dad could tell. I mean, he knew that I was going to come up and go. And all of a sudden, from the sideline, I hear this, no, Bart. <laughs> and I'm like, so I kind of stopped my dad. You know, all the parents are looking at him, you know. And so it's, I kind of stopped, and I cooled down, and I, did, I didn't go after the kid. And I always remember my... <laughs> After the game, my dad's like, Bart, I'm sorry I, I embarrassed you. I just didn't, I didn't want you um, to, to go after that, that kid. And, and I always, always remember um, what, my, what, my dad, what my dad said to me. He said, um, he taught me about self-control. He said, Bart, don't let your anger ever control you. Don't let your anger control you. How many of us know that if we're not dying to ourselves daily, something else will control us? It will. And my dad said, you will always regret it if you allow that, if you allow anger in the wrong way to control you in bursts of rage. Don't allow that to happen. My dad was an excellent example for me in that, in that way. You see, when Jesus is my Lord, what he says to us is, no, don't do that. Listen to me, and I will keep you. I know my heart. I know what my heart is capable of. And how many know our hearts are capable of doing very good things and very bad things? And the reason why denial and taking up our cross is so important and so imperative is Jesus knows our hearts, and he knows how easily we can be led astray. And we need to constantly keep guard on our hearts and so by me waking up every morning by saying, Jesus, this is the day that you have made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. But, but let me always look to you. Let me deny myself. Because something's going to happen that's going to do a check on my heart, my selfishness. Someone's going to irritate me. Help me to give this to you, and may you be in control of my heart. But let me share with you what self-denial is not. This is, this is, Jesus is not talking about this. Self-denial is not when I feel like it. It's not when I feel like it. It's not, it's not something that I turn on and off. And I want to just ask you two really difficult questions. And, and this will kind of help, help you just, just to take a look at your heart and whether or not we're truly dying to ourselves every day and following Jesus. Ask yourself these two difficult questions. Am I willing to follow Christ regardless of the, of the cost? Like if something doesn't go my way or life doesn't work out, do I just give up and say, well, that, the Christianity thing didn't work out? Am I following Christ regardless of, of the cost? And secondly, am I willing to follow Christ no matter what happens in my life or the difficult situations that I might face? See, a daily denying of myself and picking up my cross and following him guards our heart on those two questions. It guards us because we realize that this world is going to be difficult. We realize that suffering might come our way, but we do know that God will never leave us or forsake us. We do know that we can cast all our cares at Jesus' feet every single day because he cares for us. See, following Christ and denying myself is now my life. It can't be a part of my life. I now spend my life knowing him and allowing him to change my life continually. And we will all face things in our lives that just don't make sense. We will. But Christ is there and he understands and he faces all those things for us. So how do we deal with the tension? How do we, how do we find the answers when life doesn't make sense? Do we try to seek out the answer through his word? See, when we really understand the answers, we understand that when we look through the New Testament that all the disciples and the apostles went through difficult things. But they trusted God through all of them, and God gave them a joy. Do we seek to understand how God uses suffering in our lives? That he does. As much as I don't like it, he does. See, we're told to cast all our cares because he does care for us. And denial is not beating yourself up and saying that you're no good. You're no good, you're no good, you're no good. I always think of that when I say that. It's not beating yourself up and saying you're no good, you're no new. That, that, that's not denial. It's not trying to replicate Jesus and his sufferings. Well, if I can be like Jesus and his sufferings, you know, then I can be more like him. That, Jesus already suffered for us on the cross. But I want you to realize that God at times does allow suffering to come into our lives. 
And it's to draw us closer to him, for us to trust him more, that even through that, we know that Christ is with us. I remember um, there was a, a trip we took. Uh, it was our, our first trip to Guatemala as a missions trip. And I remember the missionary telling us this really, it's a, it was an interesting story. And he says, what they do right before Easter, um, many people will, will carry a cross. They'll actually take a cross, they'll carry it on their back, and they'll walk for a mile on their knees through the streets of the town until they come to the church, which is in the center of town. And by the time they get to the church, their, their knees are all bloody. And by doing this, they feel like they can be closer to Christ because they're trying to replicate what Jesus did for us. Is that what Jesus is asking us to do? To deny ourselves and take up our cross? No, that's not what he's asking us to do. You see, we are not uh, repressing ourselves. We're, we're, we're going to Christ and we're giving everything to him. We're submitting to Christ in every area of our lives. And that means at times we might suffer. We might go through some difficult things in our life, but Christ is with us. And what Jesus said to us is that when you actually lose your life and give it to me, we actually find it again. When we lose those things and we give it to him, we actually find a joy. See, Jesus says you're never going to find it in this world. You won't. Because it's not in this world. Because what good is it if you gain the whole world yet forfeit your life? Forfeit your soul. What good is it? And how many of you know at the, at the end of our life, we're not, do we really care what our bowling average was? Right? I mean, does it really matter? I mean, does it really matter the biggest fish we caught? Well, that kind of does matter in a way. But no, I'm just kidding. You know, when we look at the end of our life, those things really don't matter. That's what Jesus is trying to share with us. What good is if you gain everything, but you don't gain your soul? You lose it. And so what, what, what I want to encourage you here this morning is what things do you have to, what things have, have a lock on your life? What things have taken dominance in your life? Jesus is telling us, listen, as a follower of me, Listen, deny yourself. Take up your cross. Submit to me daily. It's a daily dying to yourself and your wants and your desires. And that doesn't mean that God doesn't care about us or doesn't give us, you know, he doesn't bless our lives. Absolutely. Does he bless our lives? How many of you are blessed this morning? I know I am. He's, he's, he's a good God. Can we thank God for being just a good God? Amen. He is. It's a beautiful, beautiful Savior. But here's the thing. My heart just gets in the way, and my selfishness gets in the way. Amen? And, and so God says, listen, when we come to Christ, we're saying, Jesus, I'm giving you everything, not a part of my life. Help me. Help me to take up my cross and deny myself and follow you. Listen, I... As we close, I, I want to pray, and there's a couple of things I want to address as I, I pray with you today. We need to pray for our country. Listen, it was a great victory on Friday. We have a long way to go for hearts. The heart of our nation is so divided. And as I was praying what to say, I say, God, help us as believers to deny ourselves, to live in the spirit of Christ and walk in humility and allow the world to see who Jesus really is because only a changed heart. How many of you know we can have arguments? And, and believe me, here's my heart. I, I don't understand why people think the way they do on some of these issues. It's, it's hard. And we are about life. Whether it's a life of someone who's living or a life of, of, of a baby who's in the mother of a womb. We are about life because God came to give his very son for our lives. There's a sanctity of life that is important that we runs through the, the whole, the whole the Bible. We see this. But as Christians, how do we do this? So I'm kind of like, for me, I'm kind of, I'm rejoicing and I'm, I'm, I'm hurting at the same time because I see the hearts of people that need Christ. Listen, let's, let's be a people that walk in humility, 
that speak the truth but encompass it in love. Let, let's be, let, let's use self-control. Just listen to me as your pastor, just for a moment, just us here today, okay? Just us here today. Um, let's do all we can to use self-control in the way we voice our thoughts. Let, let's bathe that in prayer and let's remember that we're representing Jesus. Let's, let, let's, let's remind ourselves it's about, it's not about me. It's not about my political slant. It's about lives. It's always been about lives. Jesus came for lives, for God so loved the world that he gave us his son. Let's not forget that in the, in the muck and the mire and the minutia of all this stuff that's going on. Let's not forget our purpose as a church is to show the world who Jesus really is. And it, what changed me personally, what changed me as a 16-year-old, when I came to Christ, before that, I really didn't have an opinion about any of this stuff. I was just benign to it all. But as I became a follower of Christ, I, 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 I came to understand how precious life is. And Jesus gave his precious life for you and I. He gave his life for all, even for those who disagree with us. So when things are favorable for us or not favorable, may we stay firm on the gospel message that Jesus came to save people, to change their hearts, to show them who he really is in the way back to the Father. So may we remain steadfast in that as a church and just continue to pray for our country that the love of Christ would continue to go forward as we speak the truth in love. Amen? So let's remain firm in that. So maybe you're just here today and you're maybe you haven't, relinquished your life to Christ and you haven't given that up and there's a control issue. Jesus says, all who come to me, I'm not going to cast out. But remember, there's a denial of yourself. And Jesus says, whoever does that will find life and life more abundantly. That's why he came. And for those of us that are just struggling with control, things in our life, let's just remember every day when we wake up, let's just say, Jesus, this is a new day. May I take up my cross May I deny myself daily so that I might follow you today. Guard my heart and my spirit. Guard my selfishness. And may I always submit to you each and every day. Guard my heart. When I'm offended, let me check my heart again. If there's something in there that needs to die, Lord, reveal it. Because I don't, I don't want my heart to become hardened to your voice. Jesus wants your heart. He wants everything. So let's pray. Can we pray and just pray? Pray for our country and pray for our hearts today and that God will continue to lead us. So would you bow your hearts with me? Father God, we come before you and Lord, we, we pray for our country today. It's just so divided. Jesus, I pray that we would be your voice of love and truth in this world and that hearts would change. So Lord, help us as a church to be sensitive, to remain humble, to Walk in the Spirit of Christ in all these issues, Lord. And uh, we thank you, Lord, that um, you are with us, that you will guide us, that you will lead us. So just help us. Help our nation, God. We just need your, your help, God. We need you. And Lord, I just pray for every heart here today that's just struggling with control and giving their life to you, God. And maybe there's something in their heart that has just caused anxiety and stress in their life. I thank you, Lord, that you care enough for us that you say, lay this thing at my feet. In fact, cast it, throw it at my feet because I care for you. Help us, Lord, when we feel overwhelmed and when we feel things are out of control, knowing that you are in control, even when we think everything is out of control all around us. Jesus, you're in control. Help us to submit to your lordship each and every day. I thank you for your tenderness and your love and for being a perfect savior in every way. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' precious name, in Jesus' precious name. And all God's children said, can we thank God for his word today? He's worthy of it. Amen. Amen. Let's sing of the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the faithfulness of God. Would you stand with me as we sing this unto the Lord? God bless you.
Amen. Can we thank the Lord? He is good. Amen. Listen, just before I let you go, just a couple things, and uh, we're going to 
pray for Aaron Bellinger. Aaron is uh, one of our own here at Living Word. He's going to a local Bible college and studying theology and the ministry. And he's interning with us this summer. We're going to pray for him in just a moment. We're thankful that he's with us this summer. But just a couple things. Remember, next Sunday, we start our 10 a.m. service for the rest of the summer. It's going to, just for next week. It will be outdoors, 4th of July week. So we're just going to do uh, just outdoors next week, 10 o'clock. We'll have 10 o'clock. The rest of the summer will be indoors. And so just be reminded of that. Also, we have a baptismal service coming up July 17th. And if you've not yet been water baptized, we'd love to celebrate you. And it's your identification with the death and resurrection of Christ. You can sign up online at Living Word AG for that. We'd love to have you be part of that service. So with that, I'm going to ask Pastor Brandon and Aaron to come at this time. And we're just so grateful for Aaron and the calling that God has placed on his life. And uh, we just want to pray for him and, and God's future in his life. And I'm going to have Pastor Brandon pray for him. Let's pray for Aaron. Yeah. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for Aaron's heart. God, we thank you for um, his, his um, leading. God, his um, surrendered um, life and heart to you in this area of ministry. God, we just pray um, through the summer, God, as you continue to lead and direct him, Lord, that um, you would just show him um, what it is you have for his life, God, that he would just continue to humble himself as he serves and loves. Help us as a church as we just um, wrap our arms of love and support around him as a part of our church family. And God, we just know that you've got um, good things for Aaron. So we just pray a blessing over him in this process. Uh, just be with him and be with our church family. In your, your name we pray, everyone said, amen, amen. All right, thank you, everyone. Have a great week.